So I thought I'd make a quick video on how you go about testing the upstream oxygen sensor is good or not with a low cost OPD2 scan tool. And this isn't testing the heater element side. This is testing the oxygen sensor side. If you need to know how to test the heater element inside of these sensors, since there is two parts to them, I made a video on that and I'll put a link down below if you need to check that out. But this video is gonna be about testing the oxygen sensor side. And any low cost OPD2 scan tool work. I'm using this low cost one from Amazon. I'll put a link down below to it if you need one. But basically what we're gonna do is just go and look for something like diagnose, go into that menu and the engine's running right now and then you're going to want to go down you want to find and this one is it's called data stream but some of them say live data but whichever one it is just go ahead and pick that this says live data so i'm going to pick that but if yours says data stream pick that one and we're basically just going to go down until we find the o2 sensor and there'll be some different readings in here that you can use we're going to look for the sensor one upstream o2 sensor and we're going to look for the volts this right here says o2 sensor but that's sensor two the reason it has the one in there is because it's bank one, sensor two. So we need to go down and find the bank one, sensor one, which will be the upstream oxygen sensor. And so right there, it's saying O2 sensor. And this scan tool is saying one, one, which is bank one, sensor one. And sensor one is always the upstream oxygen sensor. And so right now the engine's running. And as you can see, this is a Toyota Corolla. And that's roughly the right voltage that these are running at. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cause it to go into a lean condition. And if you check out some other videos and things like this, what they'll do is they'll clog up the air intake to make it go into more of a lean condition, or they'll spray something into the intake, something flammable that'll make it go into a rich condition. With these vehicles that have vacuum assisted brakes, all you gotta do is pump the brakes like four or five times, and that'll cause it to go into a lean condition. And when that happens, this voltage will go up and then it'll come back down and then it'll come back up to where it's at right now. So basically I'm gonna pump the brakes like five times and this should go up to something like four or something like that, then it should drop down to like two and a half or something. And then it should come back up to like right around this 3.3. And so I'm gonna go and do that. I'm gonna go and pump the brakes. Okay, so there it goes. It's going up to around four. It should go down to, into the twos, 2.5, 2.6, 2.9. Now it should come back up right to where it was at 3.3. And so, yeah, this sensor is doing what it's supposed to be doing. It went up, it went down, and then it came back up to its correct position. I'm gonna go ahead and do it one more time just to show you. One, two, three, four, five. So it's gonna go up, it's going up to 4.3. It's gonna go down into the twos, and then it's gonna go back to the 3.3. And so, yeah, the sensor seems to be doing what it's supposed to be doing. There is some more tests that you could do on these if you wanted to, but this is a very basic test that just to show you that if it's doing what it's supposed to be doing, when it goes into a lean condition or a rich condition, this voltage should change. And then when the condition's not there, it should go back to its default state that it stays in when it's idling. Like I said, these sensors also have a heater element side to them. If you want to know how to test those, I'll put a link down in the description below. But that's basically it. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me and I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you, please click like, please click subscribe and have a good day.